I live in a small apartment and so when it comes to working from home, building a minimal desk setup that has all the functionality I need to run this channel from can be a challenge. The good news? Well, I'm going to show you all the great tech, design ideas and peripherals that I'm using to stay creative and productive in my small space desk setup. Oh, it's a beauty. I've divided this M1 MacBook Pro desk setup into sections. Hardware, desk space and space design, tech and peripherals and video calling and creating that can pimp your Zoom game out thanks to the awesome team at Ulanzi. I've listed all the products mentioned here in the description below with my affiliate links if you want to check them out yourself. So upgrading to the new M1 MacBook Pro has been one of the best decisions I've made this year completely. Going for the 14 inch model with that Max chip has given me a super capable driver for my desktop setup when in clamshell, but it also then remains a really super portable powerhouse on the road. I did wonder if I would benefit more from uh, the screen size, battery and additional power of the 16 inch version, but I certainly made the right choice for me. This thing eats through video renders and high power multitasking. I've barely heard the fans turn on and I certainly couldn't have managed to edit videos on an airplane if I didn't have that smaller 14 inch form factor. I went for that Binge 24 core max chip because it massively speeds up my editing workflow whilst I think finding a sweet spot for power versus battery life in the 14 inch model. And I upgraded to 32 gigabytes of RAM to keep multitasking future-proofed. All in all, it's been amazing. So my 12.9 inch iPad Pro has moved now from being my main computer to become a secondary device again. I still use it a lot, notably for sitting on the sofa to continue working on design work with an Apple Pencil or in sidecar mode as a great quality second monitor. You should actually check out my portable desk setup video for more on the kind of power of the iPad for remote working and Apple's universal control. We'll dive into the rest of my tech and peripherals in a bit, but first let's talk about desk space and design. I absolutely love our dual desk setup and storage system from the renowned mid-century design company String. The String shelving system is an iconic mid-century design favourite, originally designed by Neil Stringing. Now mid-century pieces like this are loved by many for small spaces because of their minimalist and modular aesthetic. You are able to custom design your setup for the space. I included, for example, a small shelf to hold my Canon FD vintage lens collection. They make me super happy. And the floating cupboards and soft closed drawers are great for hiding away things like the homemade teleprompter from last year uh, and keeping my camera and sound kit organized using some shoebox lids inside the drawer inspired by Marie Kondo's minimalist tidying ideas. Nice. What I like most though, is that if I want to upgrade to a larger desk, or perhaps a sit-stand system in the future, I can simply replace the desk attachment with a drawer or a shelf. They also have metal shelves that are great for some cable management. Given that my desk setup is designed to fit into a super small space, I added this space-saving monitor arm from Vivo to mount the 4K display. I'll tell you about it a bit later. It's a beauty. So even though I think it's a great quality arm, it's actually one of the cheapest I've come across. And whilst this doesn't have that easy adjustability of those gas powered arms from companies like Ergotron, the real beauty of this arm is that it allows you to push your monitor right back against the wall when side mounted. A minimal, affordable, functional space saving option. And I think it looks pretty cool. And let's face it, in a small space like this, how often am I really going to want to adjust it? So this is the place where most YouTubers mention a Grove made desk mat or computer holder or something like that, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm keeping things simple. My Mac sits nicely under the floating shelf as part of the string system in clamshell mode attached with one Thunderbolt 3 cable. And I picked up this great felt and cork desk mat from Neat on Etsy, a great place to get affordable, beautiful custom designed accessories. I also love my simple analog clock from Braun, bringing a bit of that Dieter Rahms design aesthetic to my setup. Analog clocks are still the best, my friends. Apple, Dieter Rahms, great combo. If you don't know who he is, check him out. We can't talk about a desk setup without a good desk chair, but well, I'm gonna, because 
<laughs> I'm still looking for one. But I really need to get this sorted out, I know. I'm liking the look of some of the uh, offerings from Vitra and Herman Miller for the combination of minimal looks and great adjustability. But I know I'm an idiot. My back is not gonna thank me in the future. Let me know in the comments your suggestions uh, and I'll get it sorted out. Lighting your space well for day-to-day -day working is a must to reduce tired eyes as well as making the space a focused and relaxing environment. I love this super minimal desk lamp I picked up from John Lewis in the UK and lighting behind your monitor also helps to minimise eye strain. These tiny but super powerful LED lights were sent to me from Yulanzi. They don't have a sign off on the content but luckily enough I love them with a great bicolour and daylight matching adjustability as well as a full range of RGB. But you know what? is really cool about them. They can be magnetically mounted or mounted with a standard camera thread so that they even work when charging via their USB plug. All this means that as well as being useful lights for lighting products or backgrounds on videos, they also double for me as a super affordable ambient desk lighting solution behind my monitor. Mine just magnetically attaches on the monitor arm, so as a more portable multitasking light bar, these are a really interesting choice, if not the perfect alternative to something like the Philips Hue monitor lights. Okay, here are all the tech and peripherals that make up my minimal setup. This is my mechanical keyboard, and a lot of you have been asking about this one in particular. It's the Keychron K3 V2. It's an aluminium 75% mechanical keyboard. I've got the Gatoron brown switches in there and the white backlight. It is that rare thing, an affordable aluminium keyboard in a low profile design with Bluetooth connectivity. I'm telling you, this thing makes my teeth feel funny when I'm typing with it. It's just really satisfying. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hit a button for me if you like it. <laughs> the typing experience offers that satisfaction of a tactile and great sounding mechanical keyboard, but with the smaller form factor and quietest keystrokes, that means it looks after my wrists better and isn't too loud when I'm taking notes on a video call. The one downside I found is that it takes a moment for it to wake up from sleep mode and reconnect when you've not been using it, which can be a little bit annoying. Now, I will say I originally ordered the chunkier and louder K2 V2 and loved the feel and sound of it, and you might too. But I found A, it didn't slide under my desk tidy shelf and it needed a wrist support really for being quite high from the desk. And oh yeah, it woke up my partner next door at night. Sorry, but it had to go. I've paired my M1 Mac with the PD2725U 27 inch 4K IPS display from BenQ. It has a fantastic range of accurate color profiles for video editing and grading, as well as a pleasing interface and beautiful industrial design that in my opinion is the best looking monitor out there to pair with a Mac at the moment. That's just my opinion. Even with that rather thick profile, I think it's an absolute beauty. I can connect my MacBook with a single Thunderbolt 3 cable for 65 watt power delivery and use the built-in hub in the monitor to connect up my peripherals and external hard drives. This means that I don't currently have a kind of desktop hub because the monitor does the work for me at the moment. With two Thunderbolt 3 inputs in it, it means that I can store this amazing two terabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD drive inside the monitor and have fast and easy external storage that I can edit videos from. Brilliant. Check out my Mac monitor checklist video for a full guide to finding the right monitor for Mac for you in 2022. Next up, this is my Elgato Stream Deck, and it's kind of become an indispensable part of my desk setup. Now, it's originally intended for streamers, but I'm loving using it as my secret productivity tool to automatically set up multi-screen layouts for video meetings or running certain creative tasks, programming shortcuts for fast video editing, and auto-inputting email replies for regular questions that I get. I have two mice, mouses, me, mice. You know what I mean, not pets. Uh, that's a bad joke. The first is my trusty Apple Magic Mouse that I've had for years. It's great, but annoying to charge. The other is this foldable, yet yeah, foldable, Microsoft Arc 2 mouse. It's a super affordable, low profile mouse with some good swipe action support that I bought to travel with. Now it's not perfect, 
but I find myself drawn to it more and more to use at home, and the battery life is just ridiculous. I've never charged it. For sound, I don't have desktop speakers, as I share the space a lot with someone else, uh, and so I use these great noise-cancelling Sony WH-1000 XM3 headphones, or my Huawei Freebud 4s, that are a great affordable alternative to the Apple offering, uh, that also have active noise cancelling. Great for video calls, and speaking of which, with more and more of us spending more time on video calls or streaming content from our desks in the last few years, one of the best things you can do is improve your setup for a bit of a flex. I mean, why not? <laughs> And for me, as a creator working in a small space, one of the things I've focused on doing is finding kit that has multiple functions. So, first, for better sound, I actually use the Rode Wireless Go 2 kit, the microphones that also double as my mics for content creation. And they instantly become plug and play USB-C mics if you put the receiver into the MacBook. It means that you've got a wireless desk mic set up for video calls and voiceovers for videos when paired with something like the Rode Interview Go. And this mic stand or small rig adjustable clamp arm to set them up. I think the sound quality is great and it would also look pretty cool as a portable podcast setup in the future. For the next items, I should thank Yulanzi for sending me a collection of really cool kit that's helped me get my setup on track. This simple but powerful clamp arm is surprisingly brilliant. Yulanzi market this as a camera mount and I've been using it to clamp my Fuji X-T4 onto my monitor arm for a super high quality webcam on the top of my monitor. What's great about it is most modern cameras now have an app that allow you to use them as a webcam and it's the best flex for that kind of beautiful depth of field if you wanna use it. So if you've got an old camera or a new camera and you wanna use it, try that out. I'm also using the clamp on the top of my shelving system to set up a really quick top-down shot for products. It's a really strong, beautiful little product. An alternative option from Ulanzi is this desk uh, mount streaming arm for your camera, mobile phone, light, whatever you want. This is quite a cool setup for creators or people out there looking for a simple way to mount a camera or a light or a phone on their desk without needing all the extra paraphernalia. Uh, <laughs> paraphernalia. If you wanna take your work from home setup to the next level, check out how I'm using Notion to run my entire life by watching this video next. Or check out this one for more on how a stream deck could be your secret productivity tool. I'd love to see you on the next video. Subscribe if you're not. I'll see you there. Bye.